In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss production theory with some numbers. While each of these tutorials are independent, this is the second tutorial in a three-part series. In this tutorial, I'll discuss production theory and I will use some numbers. The total product curve and the marginal product and average product curves look like this. And in this tutorial, I'm going to take these numbers and I'm going to plot them and calculate them as well and show you how it's done. And I'll try to go slow. The amount of capital in my example is fixed at 2 and I'll vary the labor. And I also know the total product. This is a given. Now if I plot labor along the x-axis and quantity along the y-axis, I can draw in the total product curve. For example, if my amount of labor is 6, my total product or my quantity produced will be 300. So the brown line is the total product curve and the brown numbers represent the curve. Again, my amount of capital is fixed at 2. Now if I want to calculate average product of labor, the way I do that, for example, I take one labor unit and that equates to 57, quantity of 57, or total product of 57. Then I take, now I take 57 divided by 1 and this is equal to 57, which is the average product of labor. Let me do another example. Imagine I have two labor units, and my quantity or my total product would be 118. I divide that by 2, and my average product of labor is 59. It turns out 177 divided by 3 is 59 as well. 228 divided by 4 is 57. And let me just fill in the rest of these numbers for you. Hopefully you're getting the hang of it. And 340 divided by 10 is 34. Total product divided by labor is equal to average product of labor. And now I'm going to calculate marginal product of labor. It's a little bit different than average product of labor. Actually, it is different. Let me start with one labor unit. I think, yeah, like that. And that equates to a total product or quantity of 57. Now, if I move to two labor units, that equates to total product or quantity of 118. So I added one labor unit and the question is, how much quantity did I increase? How much was quantity increased? So I take 118 minus 57 divided by 2 minus 1. This is equal to 61 divided by 1. And this equates to 61, of course. And this is my marginal product of labor moving from 1 to 2 units of labor. So I took 118 minus 57 and divided that by 2 minus 1. And that gave me 61. Let's imagine now I want to calculate marginal product of labor at 3 labor units. So I take 177 minus 118 and divide that by 3 minus 2. 177 minus 118 divided by 3 minus 2, and this is equal to 59 divided by 1, which is equal to 59. So the marginal product of labor moving from 2 to 3 labor units is 59. And now I'm just going to plug and chug the numbers into the table. Marginal product of labor 
It's all in blue, obviously. And the last value is negative 2, which is kind of interesting. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. So when I move from one labor unit to two labor units, I look at the change in labor. And when I move in the upper direction right there, I look at the change in quantity. So marginal product of labor is the change in quantity divided by the change in labor, which is equal to marginal product of labor. So if I start out at zero, let me put a little yellow dot there, at zero, and I go from zero to one, my marginal productivity of labor, marginal product of labor is 57. If I go from one to two, it becomes 61. If I move from two to three, it goes down and it is 59. And I'll discuss why it goes down in a moment. From three to four, it decreases again and it goes down to 51. Notice how the curve, the brown curve kind of bends down. That's what's causing that to bend down, the decreasing marginal product of labor. And if I go from five to six, it's down to 30. And so on and so forth if I continued on. This refers to diminishing marginal returns. So if I add any more than two labor units, what I get from that additional labor becomes less and less. So I have one labor unit, it produces 57. The second one produces 61. Those two added together is my total product of 118. If I add 59, that means my total product increases to 177. So this allows me to calculate total product this way as well. So what you see is I can actually add my marginal product of labor to derive total product if I need to. 57 plus 61 is 118 plus 59 is 177 and so on and so forth I would go. So now I'm going to take the labor axis and I'm going to push that down. Let me slide that down a little bit. Labor. There it is right there. Along the y-axis of the vertical axis I have quantity per labor. And I can plot my average product of labor on this graph right there. That's average product of labor. At 10 labor units, my average product of labor is 34. If I continue on up, my total quantity produced at that level is 340. So on the table, I have 10 labor units, total products 340, average product of labor is 34. I'll graph marginal product of labor, it's blue. Notice that these two graphs intersect at three, three labor units. Average product of labor and marginal product of labor is 59. Now if I draw an up, I see the total output at that level is 177. So I end up with three labor units, total product of 177, Average product and marginal product of labor are both 59. And that does it for this tutorial on production theory with some numbers. Up next, I have a tutorial on the relationship of marginal product and average product, and I'll do a little calculus. And even if you don't know calculus, I'd still encourage you to watch the video.